Hello everybody, it's time to look at a Michael Jackson Moonwalker board. Now before I power it up, um, I can see straight away we've got some capacitors that have been ripped off by the legs are left in the board. So I need to desolder and replace those. And there's a couple of damaged capacitors over here. should always replace those, make sure they're not going to short out and cause any problems. Um, let's have a look, anything else wrong with the board? I don't know why someone's been soldering onto that connector. We'll clean that up or replace that connector. Um, let's have a look at that. There, look at this. Got some pins touching here. And um, yeah, there as well. Yeah, let me get my little mini pliers and straighten all those up. I think the rest of it's okay. Oh, there's a couple of, couple of scratches there, but I just check the continuity, make sure those traces haven't been damaged. Um, yeah, so just going to do those jobs before I power it up. And here's the board powered up. We're just getting some noise on the screen, so we've got a faulty board to deal with. Okay, so I've put the ROM board onto a known working MOV board, so that we can see if the ROM board is working okay. Ah, so we've got a bit of a problem here with sprites. Got lines through them. Right, so, I want to check out these ROMs and the sockets there, make sure they're okay. Okay, so I've replaced this socket and this socket, and I've replaced these two ROMs from this other working Michael Jackson board. And we've now got all the working graphics now. So that ROM board's now okay. Oh, we've got some lines on the uh, title screen there, so there's probably another ROM or socket I need to check out. And it was this ROM here. Title screen is now okay. So I'm just going to reburn these three ROMs onto EPROMs so that I can basically repopulate this board I've just stolen them from. And then that should be that. I can then try and work on the rest of the board. Okay, looking at the first ROM that I need to reprogram, it's uh, 13229, it's the Sega co print on top. Uh, it's a 256k file, so that's a 2 megabit EEPROM, so an 020 or something like that should do the job. Okay, I'm struggling to find a, a 2 megabit, these seem to all be 1 megabit. Oh, there's one there. I haven't got more than one, I need three of them. Anyway, let's get this one programmed. Okay, so we need to select a 27C020. Um, we've got various to choose from. It's a TMS device. So let's find that one. There we go, TMS 27C020. And that's programming. Uh, there's no point in filming, it'll take a while to do. And that's done, and we just need to put a label on to identify the chip. And then we can go and put it in the board. Now, after searching for all my high value EEPROMs, I found exactly two 2 meg ones. So I hope these both work because I don't have any other spares. I'll have to order some of those. Uh, so I can do these other two ROMs now. So I'm just going to repeat the same process and we'll put them all in the board and see if they'll work. So those three replacement EEPROMs have been fitted to the board and we'll have a look. So the title screen's good. Now that's all good, apart from, notice when Michael Jackson's, there we go, at a certain angle, there's lines. So that means there might be another ROM that's bad, so we'll have to check that out. Okay, and I found that bad ROM is this one here. So that's, a, that's working off the working board. We'll just prove that's working. So there's no more lines. So now I need to go and magic a 2 megabit ROM from somewhere, as I don't have any. And the fourth EEPROM is replaced, and the graphics all look fine, no lines. Now, I didn't have a 2 megabit EEPROM, so I've used a 4 megabit EEPROM, and I've doubled the image up into it, so the image appears twice, and that works absolutely fine.